the Orion Maestro with its automatic movement and striking blue dial manages to do just that, capturing the essence of Japanese watchmaking in a package that is as reliable as it is elegant. Let's take a closer look at why this watch has gained such respect among enthusiasts and why it's become a staple in my personal collection. Diving into the technicalities, it's worth reflecting on what makes Orient such a big name in the world of horology. Founded in 1950, Orient has always been about delivering quality timepieces that blend the precision of Japanese engineering with modern trends and currents. Unlike some of the bigger names in the industry, Orient has maintained a focus on creating watches that offer genuine value often punching well above their weight in terms of both features and craftsmanship. At the core of Maestro is an automatic in-house manufacturer movement that exemplifies the reliability that Orient is known for. The 41-hour power reserve is particularly noteworthy, as it means the watch will continue ticking away even if it's left off the wrist for nearly two days. And just like any other automatic watch, this is a crucial feature for those who, like me, enjoy rotating their watches regularly. There is nothing quite like picking up a watch after a day of rest and finding it still running strong, ready to accompany you through whatever lies ahead. And of course, there are other brands just like Seiko that offer, in some movements, 72 hours power reserve, but the price for those watches is considerably higher and the inclusion of hacking and handwinding features further elevate the overall experience with this watch. Hacking allows for precise time setting, an absolute must for those who like to synchronize their watches to the exact second. Handwinding, on the other hand, gives you control over the power reserve, ensuring that the watch is always charged and ready to go. This combination of features is something usually found in watches at a much higher price point. And of course, there are watches from China that go for less than $200 and for less than $100 with the same features with an NH35 movement. But they lack the history and this is why Orient wins at this category. And one of the first things that struck me about the Orient Maestro was its accuracy. Out of the box, it was running at an impressive rate of minus plus one seconds a day. For those unfamiliar with watch specifications, this level of accuracy is usually found in high-end watches, Swiss-made chronometers that cost several times more than the Orient Maestro. And talking about the price, I paid for this Orient 3 years ago 150 US dollars. And yes, the accuracy out of the box was incredible, but after wearing the Maestro for 2 weeks straight, I found that the total deviation for 2 weeks was a mere plus 3 seconds. Think about that for a moment. Over the course of 14 days, this watch gained just 3 seconds. That's less than a quarter of a second per day. To put it in perspective, many Swiss watches in the same category, or even higher, often have a deviation of minus 4 to plus 6 seconds per day. And this Maestro's performance is nothing short of remarkable, especially when you consider its price point and such accuracy translates into a finely tuned instrument that you can easily depend on, day in and day out. Whether you're catching a train, making it to a meeting or simply keeping track of your daily schedule, knowing that your watch is incredibly precise gives you one less thing to worry about. But enough with the technical stuff, let's talk about the appearance of this watch. And the first thing that struck me about this watch was its dial. The blue is not just any kind of blue, it's deep, almost ethereal shade that plays with light in the most captivating way. It's a kind of dial that can look navy in one moment and a vibrant royal blue the next, depending on the angle and the lighting. And the dynamic quality adds a layer of visual interest that keeps the watch looking fresh every time you glance at your wrist. 
What I appreciate most about the dial though is its simplicity. The Orient logo sits probably at 12 o'clock. And apart from the date window, there's nothing else to distract from the beauty of that blue expanse. And even though some users don't like it, the date window itself is a masterclass in design. Its color matched to the dial, not blue but black, which is very easy to conceal the date, makes the date window blend easily without disrupting the watch's symmetry. It is there, it does its job, but at first sight it goes unnoticed. The attention to detail is something that really sets Maestro apart from other watches in this category. Shifting from the dial, the case with its 40mm diameter and 20mm lug width is perfectly tailored for my wrist. It is substantial enough to make a statement, but not so large as to overpower. The high polish finish is well made, making it a suitable choice for both formal occasions and everyday wear. However, this brings us to one of the first negative points of this timepiece. The polished finish, while beautiful, is prone to scratches. It's a classic example of form meeting function, where the desire for aesthetic appeal sometimes compromises practicality. After a few months of wear, I've noticed a couple of hairline scratches starting to appear, especially on the bezel and lugs. These don't bother me too much, I like to think of them as part of the watch's character, but it's something to be aware of if you want to keep your watches in pristine condition. One of the most remarkable aspects of this Orient is its versatility. I've worn this watch to formal events, where it easily held its own against far more expensive pieces. The 100m water resistance, however, means it's also perfectly at home in more rugged settings. This is a watch you can wear to the office, out on a weekend adventure, or even during a casual evening out. And it will still look at place in all these scenarios, and if you're a 007, you can save the world and defeat some villains and still look stylish and fully functional. And just like we see in other watches and other manufacturers, there's something fascinating about being able to see the movement at work through the open case back with the rotor spinning and the gears meshing in perfect harmony. And as we know from other Orient variants, the Orient F6722 is a robust movement that even without servicing it can keep its accuracy for almost 20-30 years. Of course, such treatment is not advised to apply on a mechanical movement, but other users have worn their watches for a few decades without servicing. Orient usually advises to service the movement every 5 years, but such service could end up costing even more than the watch itself, thus no service for this one until it breaks. When comparing the Orient Maestro to other watches in its category, it becomes clear that this timepiece offers a lot of bang for your buck. Take for instance Swiss watches with similar features, automatic movements, hacking, hand winding, and a power reserve of over 40 hours you'll often find that these come at a higher price point, making the Maestro a very appealing option for those who appreciate quality but don't want to break the bank. And yes, with all these positive things about this watch, for sure it has its limitations. First of all, the lack of Sapphire Crystal. Sapphire is known for its scratch-resistant properties, and its absence means the mineral crystal used here is more prone to wear and tear. This is perhaps the biggest trade-off with the Orient Maestro. And while the Miller Crystal has held off fairly well for me, I can't help but wonder how much longer it will maintain its clarity. Another point of comparison is thickness. The Maestro's 12mm case height is a bit of a double-edged sword. On one hand, it gives the watch a sturdy, robust feel. This is not a delicate piece by any means. On the other hand, that thickness can make it a bit challenging to wear with certain dress shirts, especially those with tight cuffs. Traditional dress watches are often much slimmer, designed to slide under a cuff. The Maestro with its sticker case sometimes struggles in this regard. It is not a deal breaker by any means, but it's something to consider if you're planning to wear the watch primarily in formal settings. The lack of bloom on the dial is another aspect that might give some pause. While this is keeping with its dress watch aspirations, it does limit the Maestro's functionality as an all-rounder. 
In low light conditions, the absence of loom means you'll need to rely on ambient light to read the time. For me, this isn't a huge issue. I'm not that often in situations where I need to read the time in dark. As someone who appreciates the artistry of watchmaking, yes, the Orient Maestro has become a favorite in my rotation. It's a watch that reflects the Japanese philosophy of simplicity, where every element is carefully considered and nothing is superfluous. This is a watch that doesn't try too hard to impress, instead it lets its craftsmanship and design speak for themselves. And on my 6.5 inch wrist it feels like a bespoke watch, and I usually wear it with a blue silk strap from Artem Straps, that not only that are flexible, but they feature a loopless deployant style clasp that reminds me of the Omega style clasps. If you want to check them out, I left a link in the description of this video, as well you can check my review about them here. And in conclusion, the Orient Maestro is a watch that offers a lot for its price. It's a piece that can transition from the boardroom to the beach, from a formal dinner to a casual outing, and the automatic movement with its 41 hours power reserve, hacking and hand winding capabilities, this watch is definitely worth buying. And I'm not paid to say this, but I would definitely recommend it as an everyday watch. It is part of my permanent collection, and considering its price of under 200 US dollars, this could be a great replacement for the nowadays overpriced entry level Seikos. And of course, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you want to support this channel and see other watch reviews like this one, click the subscribe button. My name is Ed, and you watched another episode of Risaga.